What is lipoprotein A? So I get asked this all the time. I'm Dr. Alam, a board certified cardiologist. Lipoprotein A, we know you guys probably already heard of bad cholesterol, right? And you've probably watched some of my videos. This is a low density lipoprotein. This is your average everyday quote unquote bad cholesterol. Now the lipoprotein itself is not the bad cholesterol. Um, go watch my video on the difference between ApoB and LDL. This is just a lipoprotein, right? The blue structural kind of protein or molecule on here that you see that kind of makes it look like the strings of a baseball is an ApoB particle. This is what gives it its structure. We can also measure ApoB to kind of get an idea of how many of these are floating around per milli, you know, in your, in your bloodstream. That gives us risk assessment. The inside of it is the cholesterol, the yellow. If you can see this yellow stuff on the inside, this is cholesterol with a Y, cholesterol ester. Cholesterol ester is put inside these uh, molecules and these molecules job is to float around in your bloodstream and traffic mainly triglycerides. Um, that is their job. Now, the problem becomes when you have too many of these. Now we know there is bad cholesterol um, and the cholesterol in and of itself inside of these is not bad. It's just cholesterol. Cholesterol is cholesterol. It's not good or bad depending on which molecules it's in and depending on what that molecule is doing at the time, it could be either good or bad. Now, LDL molecules, most of the time, they're helping HDLs get cholesterol out of your arteries and out of your organs and out of your other tissues. So most of the time they're doing actually good, but we call them bad because these are the ones that at one point in their life cycle, deliver cholesterol to your arteries and dump it into your arteries, which causes atherosclerosis. So that's why we call these generally low density lipoproteins as bad cholesterol. We call HDL good cholesterol also generally speaking, because most of the time it's helping remove cholesterol from arteries, tissues, what have you. But there are points in this lifetime where it is not always doing good. So it is a bit of a misnomer to call these good or bad. Now back to our main topic. So this is a low density lipoprotein. There is a form of this that is more atherogenic, right? People are like, well, what is lipoprotein A? Why don't we check it on everyone? So first of all, lipoprotein A is very common. It is found in 25% of the population. Anywhere between 20 and 30% of the population seem to have this. The problem is less than 1% of the population is ever checked for this. And that's problematic. It's actually like a fraction of a percent. I think the last study I read was like 0.1% of people ever get checked for it when like literally 25% of the population has it. So this is a Kringle. This is named after a Danish sweet called a Kringle. It is put on the LDL cholesterol, you know, in this model that I'm showing you here, it is just a piece of aluminum foil. But this Kringle on the low density lipoprotein makes these three to six times more atherogenic. That is the actual problem. The low density lipoproteins that are lipoprotein A, they have this A, or let's call this the A apolipoprotein or lipoprotein A attached to it or in wrapping it makes these more atherogenic. So how, what does that mean? So these are people who may not have other risk factors, but are getting atherosclerosis at a young age. This is like the patient that had the carotid blockage, had a stroke at age 36 or open heart surgery, you know, by age 50 that you kind of like, what is cholesterol is kind of normal. How did this person end up with a heart attack or stroke? So that is a very important uh, thing to, to check. The other thing you'll find a lot in these is aortic valve disease. People with elevated lipoprotein A will have calcific uh, aortic valve stenosis. This is like calcium depositing in your aortic valve that requires that your valve gets tighter and tighter and tighter, which requires you to need valve replacement surgery at a much younger age. We've had, we've all had, we've all had friends that like their dad was 58, never smoked, cholesterol wasn't really outrageously high. It was a little high, nothing crazy. You know, maybe his LDL is like 101, 110, something like that. And it's like they are having open heart surgery to replace a valve and, and, and bypass one or two arteries because they, they do it together if they have to replace your valve and open you up anyways. So it's sad because a lot of people have this but just never get checked. So if you do, if you have a relative that had aortic valve disease at a young age without the traditional risk factors, you probably should have them checked and you should yourself should get checked if they're directly related to you. A lot of times we'll check this, you know, not just for you, like it might be too late for you, but we check it for your kids because if you have brothers, sisters, kids, they may have lipoprotein A because it's super genetic. We want to check them. That's called cascade screening. The other reason we check this is, at least in my practice, we check everyone. 
But if you have a lipoprotein A problem and have still not had a heart attack or stroke or aortic valve disease, we need to drive your LDL way, way down. Now, the guidelines aren't going to spit out a number for you. For me in my practice and what we've seen, you know, based on the different what lipidologists do and cardiologists do, you want your LDL cholesterol probably below 40. It's not a hard limit. Probably even under 55 is fine for some people. Me personally, if you've got a lipoprotein A that's elevated, and I'm I'm talking, you probably want it under 40. There's no reason why more LDL should be floating around. So why is that though? Like if if we have no medications that can lower LP little a, which we don't, LP little a currently, there are no medications that lower it that are approved. There are some in the works. As of this video though, there are none. So why, what, so how do we treat this? Like, what do we do? So imagine there are 3,000 criminals in your city. 2,500 of them are the normal bad criminals, and 500 are the super bad criminals. When you have, when you can knock out 2,500 of the real, of the bad criminals, and you still have a, like three or 500 left of the super bad ones, you've reduced the risk, the rates of crime by let's say 70 to 90%. So if we can reduce your risk of a heart attack, stroke, aortic valve disease, aortic valve replacement surgery, open heart surgery by 70 to 90%, why would we not do that? Even though we can't fully eliminate the lipoprotein A, the super bad guys, we can eliminate the 2,500 really bad guys. Um, so that is a way of thinking about it that I think makes a lot of sense. Think of it in terms of criminals. You got the super bad ones and not the, not the ones that are still bad, just not as bad. But this should be checked on everyone. We recommend in the National Lipid Association and the you know, American College of Cardiology now, the European guidelines, everybody, that everybody gets this checked at least once, a year, once in their lifetime. When it becomes treatable, we would probably recommend following it a little more closely. So at what point do you treat it? So if it's being measured in milligrams per deciliter, above 30 is abnormal. If it's being measured in nanomoles per liter, then above 75 is abnormal. If you have a patient that's just kind of over the edge, like they're like, you know, 40 or 50 or maybe 125 in nanomoles, you know, 189, whatever, you want to get their LDL below 40. If the lab value comes back over 600 or, you know, some astronomical level, 300, 385, 400, those are the ones that you want to get their LDL down as low as possible. On top of that, you want to probably send them to a specialist that can do something called a lipoprotein apheresis. A lipoprotein apheresis is almost like a dialysis, but for lipoproteins, you put people on this machine, it looks almost like a dialysis machine, and it circulates their blood through it, and we take out their lipoproteins. They may need to do that two to three times a year or whatever it is, you know, sometimes every two or three months, to get their numbers way, way down. It's hard to qualify for that. It's hard to get it paid for, but that is generally one option. I have sent some people that are greater than 600 to some centers to be considered for that. None of the centers for now have approved that just yet. So we'll see where that goes. The other option are the PCSK9 inhibitors. Things like Repatha, Prolulent, and Clicerin, and any other ones that might come down the road. There's a few oral ones in the works. Those could cause a 20 to 30% reduction in lipoprotein A as well. And it seems like those can lower it. It's off-label, so you cannot order it for that. Generally, PCSK9s are limited to people who need their LDL lower but haven't been able to tolerate other medications or they're on multiple other medications and still haven't gotten their LDL to goal. You have to justify it in a different way. You can't say it's for lipoprotein A because insurances generally will not approve it for just lipoprotein A. Until we have, and now people are like, well, what about diet and, and lifestyle? No amount of diet or lifestyle changes will lower your lipoprotein A. It's just not possible. You know, it's genetic. It's there. Nothing you do will actually lower it at all, unfortunately. Sort of like people with familial hypercholesterolemia, people have genetically insanely high cholesterol levels. No amount of diet or exercise will do it. And in fact, it's malpractice to wait for them to try to lower it, you know, certain ones, obviously, with lifestyle and diet and whatever it is. You have to put them on medications and get their LDL down very, very uh, quickly. So 
I hope that helps because obviously this is a very serious condition. It's problematic. It's not tested enough and it's quite common. You know, 25% of people, that's like a quarter of your family, a quarter of the people you know that are related to you. You might even have it, but you've never been checked. So go to your doctor and ask for this thing called lipoprotein A or apolipoprotein A. If you, if you, need to learn more about it, you can go to my blog, dralonet slash blog, or grab my cholesterol book, dralonet slash cholesterol. The book is almost done. We're in like in the final phases. There's an entire chapter on lipoprotein A. The, Amer the American College of Cardiology has huge articles on it. The National Lipid Association has a huge thing on it. It is so common, but so very ra rarely checked that we just need to raise more awareness about it. I always tell my residents and fellows, listen, this guy's 55. Why do you get open heart surgery? They're like, uh, I don't know. Like, What's his LDL? They're like, uh, 92. Or it's been controlled, 86, 70. You know, they didn't have a reason um, to have it. Like, listen, check a lipoprotein A. More than likely, they have a lipoprotein A problem. And believe it or not, you can almost predict those patients because they're, 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 we see them in the hospital, obviously, because they're very sick. And our hospital is a high level care hospital, very sick, serious disease, not many risk factors. Cholesterol doesn't look too crazy. Lipoprotein A. So highly recommend uh, you get that checked and you request it for your loved ones. Um, if you love stuff like this, join my community, dralonet slash community. Use the code one month, the number one, M-O-N-T-H. You'll get in for free. You can quit and cancel anytime. We do le weekly live Zooms. They're private. You can watch all of the previous one and a half, two years of Zooms uh, online. There's a transcript. You can search it and look for the ones you want to watch. There's a summary there. You know, it's really fun. So highly recommend you jump into the community. If you're really interested in this, we, we meet every week. You get an app where you can, you know, text me, message me, you know, talk to everyone else in the community. It's just me and my friends. It's super fun. I think you'll like it. Um, otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace.